All right, good morning, guys. Welcome back to Thorn Apple Creek Farms. What are we working on today? Well, like a lot of you guys probably, um, I got an older tractor. It's got one set of remotes. And I want to. I need two sets in order to run this round baler. Got to be able to tie it off. Got to be able to lift it up and eject it out of there. So, what do you do? Well, first thing that you do is you get on like Steiner tractor or something like that and look at what a new set of John Deere remotes is going to cost you. Quickly realize that's not going to work for your budget and start looking for other options. And I tell you, they've got, in what I opinion, the perfect option. I mean, I was looking at $1,200, $1,600 for a second set of remotes. On Amazon, they've got this diverter valve and this takes your tractor's single set of remotes, turns it into two remotes, and all you've got to do is, when you're up in the cab of the tractor, this is sitting up there, turn this valve, this side of remotes, then you can run your hydraulics just like that right on the tractor. When you're ready to run that second set, turn that diverter valve over here, run your tractor hydraulics just like that. To me, that's a great way to save yourself a thousand dollars. I'll switch that thing back and forth all day long to save myself a thousand bucks. This was on Amazon, $199.99. So pretty simple setup. All we're gonna do is we're gonna work on getting it set up on the tractor and then show you guys how it works. So come on along. This one should be easy. I've said that before though. <laughs> all right guys, so we kind of started looking this over, trying to figure out where we wanna put this. Um, you know, down here, I think that'd be a bit of a reach to try to get to. I want to get it up in here somewhere. And just so happens, there's a lot of framework right here for the seat. So we started looking in here, and there's kind of a flat spot right here. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a couple of holes in here. I ended up finding this bracket and these pieces here um, just in my kind of junk drawer in the, uh, in the barn. And what we're going to do is I think we're going to drill some holes. We're going to set this bracket right here. Right up here is going to be that diverter block, and then be able to run the hoses down here. Reach right over the top of the seat, diverter block valve right up in here. Keep it up nice and high out of the way of the three point, and uh, I think that'll work just fine. Uh, might be a little bit flimsy, so I think we're going to weld some bracing right onto here. It doesn't have to hold a lot of weight, but I mean, I probably overdo stuff. Like a lot of people in this world, I'm building it, and I'm going to make sure that that thing ain't going anywhere. So we'll get a couple of holes drilled in here and uh, get some welds on here, and we'll get this diverter valve mocked up here and, and fit on. All right, guys, here we are. So we're inside the workshop right now. Don't mind the mess in here. Way too much work and then a lot less cleaning that goes on in here. But we've got our bracket built together here. We've just kind of bolted it together. Um, these bolt holes right here are gonna mount on the tractor. The block's gonna be out here. And I've cut myself a piece of steel right here. It's just gonna go right in just like that. And uh, that's gonna give us just a little bit of added support kind of act as a gusset right there and we won't have to worry about these things moving around on us then at that point in time so um, I'm kind of looking at it here I might want to put it almost kind of contemplate put it in the middle I don't know it's always you know when you're building stuff for the first time or fabbing something up I tell you it's, it's constantly eh, maybe this maybe that so we'll see I'm gonna look at it a little bit more we may end up uh, end up moving it. <laughs> I don't know. Let me get back to you. Alright guys, so this is what we decided on. So we got our bracket here, we got our two pieces that we're going to mount the block to. I'm going to put a piece of steel right here. I'm just going to hold these two together so that they're not shifting back and forth. And then I'm going to take this piece of steel that I made at an angle right here. And I'm going to kind of set her in there just like that. Yeah? Alright, let's go at her. And in case anyone's curious, uh, the welder that I'll be using is a Eastwood MIG-175. It's a 225 gas welder, um, 220 volt. 
175 amps. How rude, I tell you. Uh, 175 amp, 220 volt gas welder. Um, great little welder for doing jobs like this. I've also got the classic Lincoln buzz box that I use for the bigger stuff. But let's get into this. Uh, yeah, throw a couple of beads down. tell you that I'm not a professional welder I really mean it um I've been kind of just half-ass welding my whole life if I got to do something structural something like that I'll find somebody that knows what they're doing but for things like this I'm gonna throw it together myself I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that's gonna tell me I'm doing this all wrong as I'm learning in YouTube there are a lot of critics a lot of them never knew there were so many experts in this world. Some of you know in my professional life, I'm a firefighter, so that just, that came second nature to me. I can take that on, no problem. Battle and dragon. All right, there we go. Uh, we're gonna hit it with the wire wheel. Of course, we gotta throw some John Deere green on it, but uh, hang on, it's gonna be plenty. I gotta stop touching that, that's real hot. I, 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 the first time I pretended like it wasn't hot, this time I have to tell you it was actually hot. I gotta stop touching it. And here I am touching it again. Yeah. Anyway, that thing will hold, I'm pretty sure. It's probably built way stronger than it needs to be. But say we'll kind of hit this with a wire wheel and uh, clean it up, and then we're gonna shoot some paint on it. All righty, so here we got her here. Um, say this is gonna go mounted onto the seat of the tractor. This is where the block is gonna mount. And, uh, you know, she's solid as a rock now. So there's what my welds and everything look like. Like I say, nothing professional, but she'll hold. Now, of course, we got to hit her with God's color here. That's a little joke to any of you Red fans out there. All right, guys, so here we go. We got her done. Uh, painted up green. Got our brace in there. Set it in just like that. Then the block's going to go right up here and uh, should work out fine. So let's see if we can get this assembled.
All right, and there we are, mounted on there. I mean, it's solid. It's these bottom ones might be able to be tightened up a little bit. Oh. The seat's got a little bit of movement to it, so you know it's moving with the seat a little bit. But like I say, I probably went overkill anyways on this. There's not really any stress to be heard of that's going on with this. I mean, it's just these these hydraulic hoses. So the next thing we got to do is we got to get our fittings in here, and then our hoses are going to attach like that. Alrighty, so kind of run into a, okay. Ran into a little problem. We're trying to get the fittings right. Really, what I need to do is is order new sleeves to put in here. Um, I haven't looked into it a ton, but I know that you can pull like a retaining clip out of here and put a Pioneer fitting sleeve inside of there. I have these adapters. They leak like a sieve. Um, I don't like them, but we're gonna use them for now. And. Uh, when we get the Pioneer, we're going to get those Pioneer sleeves and uh, be able to use them like that. So for now, we're just going to hook these back up the way that they were intended. And we should be good to go. You ever test out here pretty soon. Alrighty, I'm going to get these fitted back on here. Like I say, we're just going to use those adapters for now. We've already got them. I think I'm just going to go ahead and order order them sleeves with the Pioneer fittings. John Deere had their own fittings for a long time, if I'm not mistaken. Now they, even the new John Deere's come with Pioneer fittings. I think everything's pretty much switched over to that. So, no sense buying more John Deere stuff, obsolete John Deere stuff, when everything's going to that, all my, my discs everything so, all right so those are in there my little knobs on the bottom they're pointing straight forward maybe i'm gonna try that and see maybe they won't leak then oh somebody knows let me know um i don't know they don't leak unless there's something inside and you know like unless these adapters are in them so but all righty so there it is that's what the whole thing looks like when it's all set up. I mean, you know, these hoses are a little bit sticking out there, but I don't think they're going to get in the way of anything. Uh, put a three-point link back up. Make sure that fits up there. That does. You know, bumps into there, but it's not going to hit the, not going to hit any of this stuff up here. So it's a good way, good cheap way to. Add two ports to the tractor. So say that's twelve, sixteen hundred bucks for a second set of factory John Deere ports. This is uh, one ninety nine, ninety nine. <laughs> so um, we'll get her hooked up to the baler and give that a shot. what it's supposed to. Well, there you go, guys. Another one finished. I, I didn't want to speak too soon, but 
I thought that was going to go pretty well, and it, it went pretty well. I didn't really hit any snags. That was a real simple installation. Besides fabricating up that uh, mount, there wasn't really a whole lot to it. And as you saw, it operated the machine beautifully. So what a great way to get a second set of remotes. Obviously, there's a little bit of monkeying around back there, but to me, save a thousand bucks, totally worth it. So anyway, that's just an option. I'm going to put the link to that uh, product there on uh, Amazon right down in the description. Anybody's curious, it'll be right down there. And uh, again, thanks for coming along with me today. Thanks uh, for watching. If you like this kind of stuff, just subscribe, hit the like button, leave me a comment. Let me know where you guys are at. I'm kind of interested where these uh, videos are reaching. So until next time, you guys have a great day. Thanks.